Good day, everyone. I am Mark, your fat friend. And I'm James, your black friend. And this is the Fat and Black Connection. Where we talk about anything and everything. As long as it's interesting to us. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Maybe you should get those camera settings right before we... Uh... On today's show, we're going to be discussing some uh, some different topics. Uh, there's uh, one main reason that we're here tonight. Uh, normally, we try to come to you live uh, on Tuesdays at 1, um, but uh, just something so pressing has brought us on this evening. Um, <laughs> and so we, we will get to that in a little bit, but... Uh, in the meantime, as you know, this is a live and interactive show. And so, you know, your feedback is important to us. Make sure that you're typing in those comments and, and chatting along with us. And we will try to address as many of them as we can as we move along. Please, please, please. That's super important. Of course, only if they're interesting to us. So, oh, yeah. <laughs> so with that being said, um, first and foremost, James, how are you doing? It's been a couple of days since we uh, broadcasted. So, uh you know, here we are on a uh, Friday night, uh, 11.30 p.m. on uh, Pacific Daylight Time. Yes, sir. Uh, no, I'm good, bro. Uh, just, you know, I worked the shift. I'm back, back at home and uh, glad to be on, be on this call with you tonight, good sir. Yes, yes. So, uh, so just so that the good folks listening or watching uh, know, uh, James actually just, just literally got home from his shift. It was so important to us to talk about the topic that we want to talk about tonight uh, that he hurried home. Uh, yes, so I did. Could, um, so, you know, first and foremost, I did want to uh, share with you, because it, it does tie into what we're going to be discussing, um, I, uh, I went to the library uh, this, this last weekend with my family and, um, you know, I, I picked up a very interesting thing, um, not, not a checkout. It was actually for sale. So this is, uh, let me see, where's the camera? There we go. So this is Disney A to Z. It's uh, the official encyclopedia on Disney and uh, it's kind of interesting. It's a little bit of an older book. It is yeah. the first edition of this book. There have been multiple since then. Um, so I paid $1 for this book and I was like, okay, that's cool. That's, that's really cool. Right. So then I got home and, uh, I was looking into it online to see, you know, just out of curiosity, what the value of it was. And, uh, lo and behold, I opened the book and look inside and it's signed by the author. So, uh, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. So it, so yeah, a first edition on its own uh, was selling for somewhere around like twenty twenty five dollars on eBay. Um, obviously, you get what you you know what somebody's willing to pay for it, but right. uh, somebody was trying to sell it for like twenty bucks on eBay, and so then finding out that it's the first edition and that it's signed by the author shot that up to over seventy dollars uh, for the book. So. Um, you know, good find at the library. Good value. Good value. Absolutely. Um, and then, you know, some inter other interesting news on a performance front um, for, for the folks watching and listening out there. Uh, James and I are both actors. Um, you know, we, we enjoy working in the theater business. Um, and unfortunately, due to COVID, um, we haven't been able to do that really yeah um, shut down <laughs> yeah i mean for me last year um you know around this time last year i was supposed to be doing uh the musical uh 25th oh, spelling putnam, bee yeah 25th yeah. Uh, annual putnam county spelling bee uh i was supposed to be playing you know uh barfy which is you know a larger type role um and you know we had been rehearsing we were i believe we were supposed to open on march 20th um, and literally the weekend five, before we five opened, days, right? It's yeah, like it was like five, five or six. Days. Yeah. It was, it was the Saturday before tech Sunday. So, <laughs> Oh, that's rough. That yeah. We, we rough. found out they were shutting us down. So, uh, as far as I'm concerned, it's going to be on my resume because I put in all the work and all the effort. Um, just because I didn't, it didn't go up in front of an audience. Doesn't mean I didn't do the job. Oh no, absolutely. Uh, absolutely. So, so, but needless to say, you know, that was a year ago. Um, and something that kind of happened interesting uh, last summer was I got a uh, notification that there was auditions for a radio show um, that was being produced uh, out of Carson City. And uh, it's called Secrets of Heritage House. And I had auditioned for the show. 
and I thought I killed it. I thought I did, you know, a fantastic audition. Um, and then I didn't get cast and, you know, c- you know, considering there was nothing that we could do performance wise, really. It, I wouldn't say it was heartbreaking, but it was, it was disappointing because I, I felt like I killed it. Um, right. And I really, it was something I was really interested in. I love old time radio. I love uh, Abbott and Costello and Fibber McGee and Molly and, um, you know, a lot of the great Gildersleeve, a lot of classic radio. Um, and unfortunately I didn't get cast. And so, uh, the show aired its first season. Uh, it was 13 episodes. It's, uh, it's somewhat of like a mystery show. So, uh, it, it has that kind of old timey mystery vibe, kind of like, uh, the shadow or, um, things of that nature. So anyways, I'm sitting at home a couple weeks ago and out of nowhere, I get a phone call from, a local telephone number, um, which I didn't have saved in my phone, but I was like, you know what? Let me answer it. And I did. And it ended up being one of the producers from the show. And they said, Hey, we're looking for somebody for season two. Can you get on a call, a zoom call with us right now? And I was like, uh, okay. (laughs) So, uh, so they emailed me some sides. I got into a zoom call, um, and was on with, I don't know, six, seven people, writers, directors, producers. And, uh, you know, they had me read some stuff and they cast me in, in a, in a part that was supposed to be intro- that is supposed to be introduced a couple episodes into the season. And, uh, this last weekend, uh, I got an email from them saying, Hey, uh, we think we're going to do some movements. Are you okay with a, a change? And, moving into a part that uh, is in episode one, you know, pretty much right away. Uh, but we need you to start recording this week. And I was like, oh, um, <laughs> yes. yeah, let's go. <laughs> so uh, so I had my uh, my first recording session earlier this week, which was actually Tuesday night. Um, we broadcasted Tuesday afternoon. Tuesday night, I went yeah. into my recording session. Um, but needless to say, I'm going to do a shameless plug for, for the show. It's called Secrets of Heritage House, which you can find on the interwebs. Uh, you can find at secretsofheritagehouse.com. Um, there's a Facebook page. There's, it's on Anchor, uh, just the same as our podcast. Oh, nice. um, so ultimately, the premiere date uh, for season two is Sunday, April 25th, uh, and that'll be at 9 p.m., and it, it premieres on a local radio station. So for those of you living in Northern Nevada, you'll be able to hear it on KNBC 95.1 with a rebroadcast on Friday, the following Friday. Um, Once that rebroadcast happens the next morning, uh, it goes to podcast format. So available through wherever you can get your podcast through. Uh, So basically we'll, we'll be going uh, through mid July. I'm not sure if it's going to be another 13 episodes or how many, um, but needless to say, uh, we will be, you will be able to hear, you know, live uh, via local radio if you live in Northern Nevada or via the interwebs and, and podcast services um, every Saturday. So, yeah. yeah. Support your boy. Yes, yes, please. <laughs> um, so needless to say, Secrets of Heritage House. Um, season one is already out there. You, you should probably go give it a listen if you do have any interest. Um, I, I, I listened to it and uh, it is, it's, it's an interesting show. I'm not going to, there are a lot of twists and a lot of secrets, so I'm not going to uh, give anything away in that regard. Um, you know, the, the only thing that I can really say about my character is uh, that his name is LB Brandon Jr., uh, I don't even know what LB stands for. The the writers, <laughs> the producers, they haven't told me. Um, oh, there you go. Yeah, so uh, I assume it means... It's already a mystery. Something, right? Um, <laughs> and uh, I I am an estate lawyer helping, uh, you know, some some folks handle a situation. That's, that's about go. all I can really say. Um, but definitely check it out. It is, uh, it's been fun so far one week in and... Uh, you know, it's, it's definitely between doing this show with you and, and now working on this, it's, it's really helping to, uh, scratch that creative bug. Yeah. Um, so yes, yeah. there yeah. you go. Read, reading off scripts and, uh, there you go. You know, having people tell you how you suck at reading or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> make sure, make sure you, uh, make sure you add that, uh, 
at least throw a little little shout out on our page and uh with a link so we can we can get to that yeah i guess i could do that you know be helpful so with all of that out of the way james do you have any shameless plugs that you want to share nah nah i'm just listen main thing is is that uh i hurried home to make sure we could talk about what we're about to talk about because uh when you dropped this on me this morning i was like oh that sounds interesting i definitely love to do it on the show and then uh when we had our conversation a little bit later this afternoon and you you were like we we i think we need to do this tonight and i was like uh yeah i'm down with that i can agree with that so definitely let's let, 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 let's just get into that bro yeah so needless to say uh I, I was notified about this uh, pretty much immediately once it was announced. Um, you know, I, I have to preface and say that I am a Disney stockholder. Um, and so, you know, I get notifications and everything pretty quickly once they, they get officially announced. Um, and so I was aware of this and, uh, you know, I shared it with James this morning. Uh, we talked and, uh, Originally, we were going to wait until our Tuesday show to to do this and incorporate it in that. And I felt like, nah, we need we need to talk about this now. Um, you know, if it wasn't clear in our first episode where we talked about Disneyland reopening, uh, we we are Disney junkies. We we love, we love it. Disney. We love Disneyland. Love Disney World. Love everything Disney. Um, I was one of the original, you know, people who signed up for Disney Plus for three years. Um, you know, I love Disney, always have. Um, I, I would say I'm I'm pretty hardcore Disney uh, junkie, if you will. Um, with know that being said, know, know some stuff that most some people won't even know. So, you know, hey, you got to. <laughs> absolutely. So with that being said, if you do follow our page on Facebook, I did uh, post a link to a website, which is DisneylandForward.com. Um and this is where uh, Disney, is, this website is geared from my perspective. I think it is a website that is geared towards local officials in Southern California mm-hmm. to uh, try and drum up public support, uh, to try and sway public officials to help uh, rezone certain areas of the Anaheim area around Disney um, so that they can further advance the Disney cause, if you will. Um, you know, for copyright reasons, I'm not going to bring up the website on, uh, screen to share. So, uh, that's why I am sharing the web address. It's DisneylandForward.com. Um, I have it up on my screen so that I can try and verbally walk you through what I'm seeing and hopefully to create visions in your head. But I don't know if I'm that fantastic with my auditory, um, I'm uh, I'm pulling it up right now. So you go ahead. You go ahead. Fair enough. Fair enough. So um, what you'll find on the homepage is uh, the the quote, there's a great big beautiful tomorrow, just a dream away, which for those of you Disney fans, uh, you know that that is a quote from a song from a fantastic rag carousel of progress. (laughs) Yes. Uh, Yes. Yes. so ultimately, the homepage, it says, Disneyland Forward, a multi-year public planning effort with the city of Anaheim. And of course, you know, they have a lovely ethnic family on the homepage. So got to love playing into that. Um, so ultimately, what they're trying to do here is they're trying to take some conversations that happened in the 90s uh, with the city of Anaheim and the county of Orange, Orange County, um, in regards to some things that they were trying to do. So you may know or may not know that back in the nineties before California adventure was being pushed forward, the original plan was actually to do Westcott, which would have mirrored Epcot on the East coast. Um, It it wouldn't have been a one-to-one, but it would have been conceptually similar. Um, Unfortunately. uh, Hold on. So we could have got a giant golf ball. Um, I, from what I saw, some conceptual designs, it wasn't going to be a golf ball. Uh, there, oh, it, it was going to be a, a, a geometric type shaped item, but, uh, and it would have actually been more towards the center of the park rather than at the entrance. Yeah. Um, 
But again, those were conceptual drawings. It never really got anywhere past that, kind of where we are today. And so I do want to preface anything that we talk about in this conversation. This is all conceptual. Um, there, there is nothing that is official. There is nothing that is happening. We are years away from anything that we talk about today um, likely becoming reality. Of course, as we know with Disney, when they do decide to do something, they do it quick. I mean, Galaxy's Edge, um, you know, Star Wars Land, if you will, at Disneyland, uh, from the time that it was first announced to the time it was done, I think was in about two years. So when they decide they want to do something, they can do it very quick. They have the resources. They have no problem. They do not play. Yeah, they've got no problem with dumping billions of dollars into something uh, for long-term value. Um, Look, let me just let me just tell you this. So, one thing I found out was uh, so Disney when they decided to do World of Color, there was uh, they got the people that did the fountains for the Bellagio in Vegas. Now, mm-hmm. if you've seen the fountains at Bellagio, they're pretty amazing. They had a budget. My imagination is Disney came to them and said, hey, we want you to do a water show. Okay, how much you working for? Okay. <laughs> like, uh, what's your budget? Okay, just just do whatever. Make it amazing. And, and that's it. I mean, Disney has zero problem with throwing money at a project. Absolutely. Zero. Yeah. So even more to that point, so uh, James, I don't know if you're aware, and please tell me if you're not, but um, – Part of the reason Westcott didn't happen was because also in the 90s, uh, Disney had bought up a lot of uh, land in Virginia, and they were planning to open a, another theme park called Disney's America. Oh, no, I didn't know about that. Okay. So uh, I won't go into it too much, but it was, um, it was conceptually going to be an America based uh, theme park. And they thought that uh, Virginia, where it was, was not so far from DC, which is a huge tourist hub that it could draw people down. It was going to be kind of a one day park. Um, Kind of how, what they, they consider uh, California adventure to more or less be like a one day park. Um, So uh, ultimately it it was, it was announced in 1993 and uh, they, they scrapped it less than a year later. Um, They had spent millions of dollars buying land uh, in the area. um, And ultimately they had to scrap it because uh, it was not well received locally. Um, Yeah. I can understand that. Like uh, it's the same, same, some of the same issues that they had uh, in California up North with the possibility of opening something at Skywalker ranch. That's news to me. I've never heard that. So that's interesting. Are you yeah, talking about, uh, like there, amusement wise or? Yeah. The apparent, so apparently um, there was talks now, uh, like, again, this is, I'm not a hundred percent sure on this. I remember hearing, reading something about there was talks of opening uh, some sort of amusement type um, really themed around star Wars uh, at least in the area of Skywalker ranch since they, when they bought up, um, when they bought up Lucas arts and uh, the whole um, Lucas films for star Wars and all that kind of stuff. There was a, there was talk of talks about that apparently. And um, the uh, people up there were not thrilled about having um a, a lot of traffic coming through there if they were to do that. And um, so, yeah, and a and whole bunch of touristy stuff. And it was, it was, a, it was a thing. But apparently that got kind of squashed by, um, by the city itself. Yeah, interesting. Uh, I've never heard that before. So, it, you know, I, if it's true, I, it makes sense to me. I, I believe Skywalker Ranch is up near Marin. Um, yeah, and that's, that's a kind of <laughs> pricey area. So, yeah, I yeah. wouldn't really want whole lot of just uh fans coming through anyways yeah and it's also not necessarily easy to get to so it's it's pretty far off the beaten path now to be clear i mean disneyland when it was first conceptualized back you know in the 50s and uh opening in 1955 uh there 
was a lot of orange groves. Uh, that's, that's the land where Disneyland was built. Right. Yeah. Um, so there, there weren't a lot of major highways and, uh, so, you know, it was a very different time. So, you know, no obviously that that's revenue potentially missed out on by Marin County. So shame. But on at that. the same, t- at the same time, I kind of understand like, you know, you wouldn't, you know, you don't want just, uh, it's it from what I understand, Marin is kind of a quiet area, and so bringing all those people in might yeah I don't know you know let's, who knows re- re- really quickly I do have to share this image um, just because it's very hilarious um, and this is uh, on our our Facebook page it's the snapshot of us what we're doing right now um, so I, I just love the face you're making. <laughs> Yes. So thank you, Facebook, for giving us the most flattering images. <laughs> this is why we choose to do our live broadcast through you. Yes, absolutely. Um, so needless to say, uh, Disney's America fell through. Um, it, it was a big loss. Uh, I don't know if they ended up selling off that land, if they still own it. I don't, I don't know. However, what that ultimately resulted in was... Uh, a revenue source that was not going to come to fruition. And so um, they decided they needed to also the economy wasn't great. And so they decided they needed to scale back their plans for Westcott. And that's why today we have California adventure. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes. So, um, you know, not a terrible theme park when it opened, it was not great. Um, It's, it has, out of any Disney park ever made, it has had the probably the most changes in its short lifespan. Uh, Twenty years this year. Um, Is that it? Yeah, yeah. And it has. I guess it, yeah, it opened in two thousand. Because yeah, so when I went for grad night, it it was not open yet. Yeah. So it was still being worked on. Yeah. It's. Uh, it has had a lot of changes. It has had a lot of rides rethought reimagined it has had uh ride closures ride removals um you know i was just talking with my wife recently about um the maui boomer i don't know if you remember that one it was like the opposite of drop zone where you oh you shoot up drop down. yeah you shot yeah, up yeah i remember that yeah i remember that um that ride was not around very long um oh is it gone already oh it's been gone uh, it wasn't that great anyways but i mean you know it was it was a ride was, yeah, and there, now in that now in that space is the uh, inside out. Uh, I can't remember what it's called, but it's an inside out themed ride where they used the Ants Land um, vehicles and they just repurposed them themed as inside out. As the little balls, the what? The balls, no. the, the 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 memory balls. No, no. So um, if you remember in. Uh, Bugs Life area, um, there was a ride that you you went in, you sat in a little cart, and it seemed, it was like it was on a balloon, and it went up, and then they spun around. Does that sound familiar? Oh, okay, okay, okay. I get what yeah. you're talking about. Okay. So it's it's the same ride, same ride mechanics, same ride carts, everything. It's just been repurposed uh, with new skin, if you will. So it picks our peer, basically. Yes, yes, okay. of course. So. Okay. Um, Anyways, uh, California Adventure, uh, I don't think has ever really lived up to its potential. So there was always talks after California Adventure opened about a third park happening. And some of the concepts that existed or were rumored at the time was uh, in, a, in another area of land, they would build the 100 Acre Woods. It would be a Winnie the Pooh themed uh, park that would have, you know, multiple different rides, you know, a place where you could go play poo sticks. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I have a fun uh, place in my heart for Winnie the Pooh. Um, yeah. I, I mean, I do too, but at the same time, I, I remember hearing something about that and I was just like, I, I don't know if it, I don't know if a, an entire, a park dedicated to Winnie the Pooh would be, you know, well, and, and so ultimately it didn't end up happening. Right. And uh, 
so back when uh, everything did happen with Westcott, then Disney's California Adventure, was they had to have certain areas rezoned uh, in the area around. And ultimately, Disney didn't get everything that they wanted when they were working on that. Um, they did get a lot, and so they worked with what they were given. Um, you know, you, you may remember going back pre-California Adventure, that used to be a parking lot. Yes, you can still see the lines in certain areas. Yes, or you can that, still see it. <laughs> that was the parking lot. Um, yeah. And uh, so ultimately, where we are today is we're at a place where they want to expand. They want to do more in Southern California. They want to invest. They want to invest billions of dollars, um, which, you know, results in revenue for schools down there, revenue for the county, revenue for the city, revenue for the state, right? Absolutely. Um, and, and so what they're trying to do through this website is introduce some concepts of what they may want to do uh, but in order to do that, they need some areas rezoned. Um, and what you'll find on one of the pages that's, uh, you know, if you look under, if you're looking at the page and you do the drop down under project and you go to limitations, um, there is an area that shows the 1990s uses and, and approvals and then Disney today uh, and they're side by side. And uh, what you'll see is the changes that happened in the 90s. Uh, to, to rezone some areas. And what's kind of interesting is uh, up in that northwest or the top left section, uh, th there was an area that was zoned for an amusement park, which is pretty small. That is where the 100 Acre Woods was going to be. Um, and uh, obviously they didn't press forward with it. They, they, they decided not yeah. to do it. Um, and so now where we are, if, if you're looking at the website, following along with us and you do the drop down for project and go to possibilities, uh, what you're going to see is a very lovely, uh, artist rendering of what they could potentially do in an area. Uh, if you were, uh, looking at Disneyland straight on, uh, North, South, uh, to the east of uh, the park, uh, east of the parks, you have uh, the Disneyland Hotel and Paradise Pier Hotel. And so basically in a swath of land in that area, they would build uh, additions to Disneyland and an addition to California Adventure. So I'm not sure... You know, some of the renderings here make it look like um, the walkways from each of those parks would go over the street. Um, you know, again, these are artist renderings. These are conceptual drawings. Um, this, this may not be what ends up happening. Um, but I feel like, man, this, just looking at this, this first image, uh, and with the quote from Walt Disney, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in the world. And, and you know, that, that's what Walt really felt. Um, you know, he left certain parts of the park unfinished to prove that point. Um, and, and so it was interesting when I was first looking at this, these drawings uh, conceptually and trying to understand, okay, is this a third park? Um, is this, you know, what, what is this exactly? And then as I read further and I started looking into it more, what it really is, is it's additions to Disneyland and to California Adventure. And so what we find is that um, what Disney's really saying is conceptually some of the things that they could do with this air, with these areas, if, uh, they were able to get the areas rezoned by the city of Anaheim. And um, so what they talk about is um, Disney's newest lands and attractions with Disneyland forward and an updated approach. These exciting new lands and attractions coming to Tokyo Disney sea could be the perfect inspiration for the future Disneyland park. Yeah. So then what we see are some uh, artist renderings again uh, of a frozen land. Um, I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. I would, I like, 
I would like to see Arendelle, honestly. Like, that would be kind of dope as another castle at the park. That would be kind of dope. Yeah. Um, and, and obviously they talk about, you know, there would probably be a thrilling boat ride, which is, I would assume, matches what we currently have at Walt Disney World in Norway Pavilion. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they then they talk about an area that could be themed after Tangled, um, which would involve a, a restaurant and a gondola ride. Um, I've never seen Tangled. Not gonna lie. I, oh really? Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I, Bro, I'm it's not, on Disney Plus. You better go watch that movie right now. Uh, okay. Well, we're doing this right now. So. Well, I mean, like after we're done with this. Oh, actually, because it's gonna be late. Maybe tomorrow. Yeah, afternoon it's, or something. <laughs> it's it's Saturday, so we're now at twelve oh one. So it's Saturday. Oh yeah, well yeah, Saturday. So, um, and, and then they also show an image of Peter Pan, uh, a, a Peter Pan themed area. So ultimately, um, this is what they're saying they could add to Disneyland, uh, for people to enjoy in in this swath of land over north of uh the Disneyland Hotel. So. James, first thoughts. Okay, we, we haven't even gotten into the California Adventure piece yet. We'll get there in a moment. Yeah, um, I'm really excited about that one. But uh, no, I actually, I, this is this is um, this is exciting. I, I like the fact that they uh, the the ideas that they have keep within um, the uh, fairy tale realm, which is Disneyland. Um, I, I feel like that is that is a a, a very good idea. Um, seeing as uh, Tangled and uh, Frozen are two relatively newer and very popular um, uh, titles under Disney. Um, And I mean, just like, you know, they have um, Tangled Ever After, which is a, uh, which is a cartoon uh, animated version which is an actual like 2D animated version of Tangled, um, c- a continuation of, and then um, with Frozen, you know, uh, being one of their higher grossing films over the past number of years. Um, Don't forget Frozen 2. Oh yeah, no, that's what I'm saying. Uh, Frozen and Frozen 2, um, which I would be very interested to see um, if you could, you know, visit Elsa's cat, I mean, it looks like there, it's probably going to be like a uh, up on, it's going to be visual, uh, probably not going to be something that you can actually visit, which would be interesting as well. I would um, assume the ride would be housed inside that mountain. Yeah. Uh, and, and I don't know if you've ever seen the footage of the ride or have you been on the ride? I've been on, I, I actually, I've been on the ride. At, so you do go to Elsa's world. castle there. Yeah, yeah, no, and it's 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 interesting. I mean, like, um, it. So I'm. I like the idea. Um, I, I like the idea of Frozen. I like the idea of, and and actually, that'd be a great. I mean, because they talk about um, the home of Elsa and Anna, so I'm sure that would be more of a constant character um, opportunity for photos and such. So that'd well, be kind. Of- and, and they do specifically say that there would be a restaurant set inside the castle. Yeah, that, that, I mean, so are we talking about um, uh, food that is uh, like, so a themed restaurant. So we're we talking about food that's like from uh, that, that Scandinavian area. I, I really don't know. I mean, well, ultimately I thoughts, you know, just what yeah, do you know? Th- I, I mean, uh, you know, uh, y- so my suspicion would be that it would be similar conceptually to the restaurant in uh, the Magic Kingdom in Di- at Disney World, uh, which takes place in Beast Castle, uh, and I believe it's called Be Our Guest. Yes. Um, so I, I would suspect it might be something to mirror that conceptually. Okay, I can see that. Um, I, I have no clue. I'm. I, I would suspect if we looked at, uh, you know, uh, Disney C, uh, we might find some information there as to how it's being set up there. Again, oh, yeah. they're true. saying this is being done in Tokyo C. We could do that here. That doesn't mean they're going to. So keep that in mind. Right, right. I think, but like, again, I think that would be a very uh, popular option um, to do. And then um, in the Tangled area, um, looking at a gondola ride, 
which would uh, feature the Lantern Festival. Um, yeah, that's a very. I mean, and since you haven't seen that film, that is a very beautiful moment in the film. Like it's. I mean, even on 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 film, it's visually stunning, and so I can only imagine <laughs> what Disney would be able to do with that. I can I can imagine that being um, a very awesome awesome um uh, experience i i also think if they did something along the lines of uh this is they're talking about a gondola ride but i'm saying like uh if they were able to maybe pull something off to where um you could there's a there's a part towards the it's about a it's more than a quarter of the way in um they had they kind of went down a um it was almost like a mine, uh, like a mine shoot, uh, trying to escape the guards. I, if they could possibly pull something like that off, that'd be kind of interesting and fun, I think. They say there would also be a restaurant uh, in, in that area that would be themed off of, uh, I guess, a part of the movie where she went to a restaurant and befriended a band of thieves. Yeah, no, that's a great moment, too, because those guys are, they look like brutes and uh, and they turn out to be just a bunch of big old softies. <laughs> so that would be a lot of yeah, fun. So, so, this, so this next area is what I find to be somewhat the most interesting, uh, a Peter Pan themed area. Uh, so the description that they give is a uh, Neverland area features two attractions. One that with the help of Tinkerbell takes guests on a boat ride following the Lost Boys down a river and the other taking guests on a journey to the middle of Pixie Hollow where Tinkerbell and her fairy friends live. There are also, the area also includes a restaurant with spectacular views inspired by the Lost Boys iconic hideout. So what I find the most interesting here is uh, for those huge Disney fans, uh, you would know that back when the park originally opened, there was a lagoon uh, in the middle of Fantasyland or on the backside of Fantasyland yeah. that housed um, Captain Hook's ship, basically. Um and so obviously that's gone, been taken away. And so now we're talking about potentially bringing something like that back. And what I also find the most interesting about this potential option is that it's Peter Pan. This is old film. This is not a recent film. I, I mean, they are, uh, you may be aware that they are doing a live action. Um, oh, okay. So I was not aware of that. Okay. But, so but I they, do know that the, uh, the Tinkerbell films have been, um, they were straight, they were straight to, um, video, but those are actually, I was actually pretty impressed by those films. Actually, not going to lie. Straight to video. What is that? Straight to DVD straight. To... <laughs> what is, what are DVDs? Um, uh... yeah. <laughs> Well, back in my day, we had uh, films. You're, you're dating yourself there, James. Yeah, well, I you bought start, them on. I bought them on DVD. You start talking about Betamax or Laserdisc. Uh, I have some Laserdisc, but we won't talk about that. Well, then, um, <laughs> so that is the uh, imagined. Uh, or forward thinking what they could do with an extra swath of land to add some areas for Disneyland. Before... Well, one of the th but, but hold on. One of the things that I find interesting about this too, is that right now, from what I remember at Disneyland, they have a pixie hollow um, area, which is just like photo opportunities with uh, Tinkerbell and flora fauna. If you've seen the Tinkerbell films, you know what I'm talking about, but um, they, so I'm guessing that, that would be a more um, inclusive uh, section of this area if they were to do this. Yeah, I would, I would think you're right. I would think now that's, that's going to be my next thought on this is uh, would they move that over there and it would make sense to. It's but... not, it's, it's not a very big, um, it's not a very big thing. It's, it's more of a, it's, uh, from what I remember, it's more of just kind of almost a staging area with um, like flowers that are a little bit big, you know, like bigger than life. So you feel kind of like you're you're a fairy um, with uh, with Tinkerbell and uh, and uh, her friends there. So, so I think James, it, when you went to that area, did you feel like a fairy? 
No, actually, I didn't. Uh, I didn't actually. I felt like a uh, a, a grown man being uh... <laughs> a grown man questioning why am I in this area? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. without a child. Yeah, I was very much questioning that, but it was one of those things. It was like, oh, okay, I mean, because I had heard about it, and uh, so kind of seeing it was like, okay, I see what they did here, and then just kind of moved along. So, so I, I, I do think you know they're they're talking about there being a Pixie Hollow area over there, so it would potentially make sense. Uh, maybe where you get off of the ride uh, of that Pixie Hollow ride, you are now in the area of Pixie Hollow where you could meet you know, Tinkerbell and her fairy friends or whatever. Yeah, that'd be kind uh, but, of interesting. But what does concern me potentially is in doing this, would they potentially take out the Peter Pan, the flight of Peter Pan, out of Fantasyland proper? Um, I don't... I would hope not. I think it is one of the most popular fantasy land rides of all time. I've never seen that line not be less than an hour wait. Could they, they could move it. I don't know if they would, I don't know. I don't know. Because the thing was, is that when um, the, uh, well, at least at um, Disney world, when the seven dwarves mine car opened the snow white scary adventure scary adventure is now gone now they have taken pieces of that ride and um and kind of added it in with the mine oh, the seven dwarfs mine car um mostly at the end but it's it's like one of the one of the big things um at the end of the ride but um I, I mean, don't get me wrong. I do like the Peter Pan. I do like the Peter Pan uh, ride. Uh, but I mean, I don't see why you couldn't uh, re reconcept it. Maybe I don't know. Yeah, I or new con- I or just a or a new concept in general. Like leave it, leave that ride where it is, and then make a new ride. Um, like the, they're talking about this uh, uh, riverboat ride that with the lost boys i mean i don't see why that couldn't just be a whole new thing in itself yeah and i think that's one of the things that kind of worried me a little bit because i do i love uh peter pan's flight um it, it first time i went to disneyland i was five i think and i i can still i still have memories of that ride um you know it's it's just an amazing ride and um i would hate to see that be torn out unless it was to be moved over to that Peter Pan land, which I think would make sense. And then that gives you a spot there in fantasy land to do a new uh, IP ride. You know, um, I don't yeah. know. You, I don't know. Uh, you know, you could do a, a Raya themed ride. I don't know. Something fantasy um, more. Recent. Uh, yeah. I mean, I could definitely see, um, you know, I could see definitely something like it with, yeah, with Raya and the last dragon coming out. Uh, recently i could see them doing maybe throwing something like that in there but we we could all i mean the imagineers only they're probably like oh if we move this yes <laughs> and well and that's how i think right um now since you did uh reference you did invoke uh snow white's scary adventure i was wondering before we move on uh with the other conversation if you had heard that they have reimagineered uh Snow White's Scary Adventure at Disneyland. It is now called Snow White's Enchanted Wish. Um, They have toned down some of the scariness. Yeah, Um, I can understand that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So it is obviously set to reopen, um, you know, when the park reopens from last I heard. Um, But uh, yeah, they, they have, in essence... Uh, some of the imagery I've seen coming out of there, there's a lot more focus on the mine section with, uh, you know, um, LED screens with, you know, the characters doing stuff and uh, some more animatronics. Um, but uh, yeah. That I, would be, I, I, I mean, again, it's one of those things. I don't really know how I feel about all that, but I mean, like, yeah, 
I could understand why you'd want to tone that. It was, it's a little, it's, it's a little dark in there. <laughs> it's, it's one of those dark rides for sure. So it's, but uh, I would definitely, I could tone that. I could see that being toned down a, uh, quite a bit. Yes. And uh, we, you know, just to call out a couple of comments um, that, that we have in our chat area, um, you know, a, a grown man who went to Pixie Hollow, at least he had a reason, James. He, he knew somebody uh, working in that area. So he went to say hi to them. Um, yeah, that, yeah, that's that the is, same. That's the same reason I went. Sure, it is. <laughs> or could it? Or she... could it have to do with your fetish with Tinkerbell? Whoa, whoa, what are you talking oh, about, bro? Oh, like... Bro, it's after dark. We're allowed to talk about these things. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, don't get me wrong. I'm like Tinkerbell, but it's like you know, it's not one of those type deals. It's not like it's not like. Oh, take a bell. Let me get yes. this. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and yes, yes, com, you know, viewer, we do know the individual you're referencing. Uh, we did uh, Aida with, with yes. her. I also did uh, Fiddler on the Roof with her. Um, oh, so, um, uh, however, the, uh, a viewer asks, have you seen the BATB ride from Singapore? BATB. I'm not sure I know what that acronym is. Um. I I, yeah. I I did a search for BATV to see if I could find something. All I keep finding are rap battles, um, and, and I don't <laughs> think I don't think that's what you're referencing. So uh, if you could spell there's rap it out, battles, there's rap battles in Singapore. <laughs> I mean, there probably are somewhere, but this is a Disney <laughs> conversation. So, uh, yeah. um, but by all means, uh, if you could spell out BATV for us, that would be fantastic because I'm trying to. Beauty and the Beast. Oh, there we go. Okay. That okay. makes a lot. That makes it a little easier. Yes. Uh, you know, probably for me, I would have used the extra two keystrokes and just typed Beauty, and that might have given it away. Or five keystrokes, Beast, or B and B. Well, that I guess could have been bed knobs and broomsticks. But either way, <laughs> what? Uh, Angela Lansbury all over the place tonight, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> um, Beauty and the Beast ride from Singapore. Uh, I have not. Um, of course, as soon as we get done with this broadcast, I'll be I'm going to, to YouTube. To, yeah, because I've never heard of that either. Um, I'm actually pulling it up in my uh, search bar right now, so that way I don't forget about it. But no, I have, I have not. Um, I will say something interesting that I was watching today is somebody was at uh, California. I'm um, sorry, not California Adventure. Somebody was at um, Animal Kingdom live broadcasting their visit to the park. So the entire time they were walking around the park, uh, they had their camera on. And so that was kind of interesting. Um, you know, I, I probably shouldn't have spent as long as I did watching it, but, uh, you know, I, I had, a, a, a well, I mean, I sent you the video. It was mostly for you when I went to, um, animal kingdom, I did that live. I did like live ish feed. Yeah, no, and that that was awesome, and it, it's different when you know the person who's doing it. Um, yeah. I I don't know the person who was broadcasting today, so I probably shouldn't have spent as much time watching it as I did. Um, <laughs> but you know, it, it was interesting because I haven't been there in a decade. Um, and uh, oh, he was wrong. It's not Singapore. It is Tokyo. And I did okay. find a video. Um, full ride through point of view it's about uh seven and a half seven forty five so i will definitely watch that after this broadcast yeah. um so Send me that link I, I i will do that so um <laughs> before we move into the next section uh i want to take just a quick break uh if that's okay so let's just do that really quick yeah and we're back <laughs> So, uh, you know, we've been talking about uh, Disney potential expansions, um, you know, the, so we this talked about Disneyland. This is the one. Okay. This is the one. I'm excited about this. Okay. Yeah. So we, we just talked about Disneyland expansion, uh, which, which would be an area uh, that would include potentially a frozen area, a tangled area, and a Peter Pan area. Um, now let's talk about Disney's California Adventure and a potential expansion to that park. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to read some of the direct verbiage from the website that, that Disney has posted, which if you want to follow along, this is at DisneylandForward.com. Go to the projects drop down and click on possibilities. Um, 
So with updated approvals, Disney California Adventure Park could be home to some of Disney's most technologically advanced, immersive, and cutting edge entertainment, taking cues from these exciting lands and attractions around the globe for inspiration. Yes. First up, Zootopia. Zootopia. Whoa. Yeah. Yes. Uh, Love so that movie. It, it's a fantastic movie. Any movie that features Shakira is a good movie, um, <laughs> especially as a dancing llama, dancing, singing llama. Gazelle. Gazelle. Oh, Gazelle. Yes, yes. Sorry. <laughs> um, I forget. I forget there are antlers there. So. A llama. Um, so, so the verbiage that they use currently under construction at Shanghai Disneyland. Shanghai gets all the good stuff, man. Uh, sure do. Guests will be invited to experience the mammalian metropolitan metropolis of zootopia where anyone can be anything with a new major attraction that will seamlessly blend disney storytelling and state-of-the-art technology to bring this fan favorite movie and its characters to life i have seen some of the concept art for the zootopia land that's going into shanghai it is impressive yeah i'm telling you as long as hey look all i want to be able to do if this if this were to open uh here I gotta go see. I gotta go see uh, Flash at the DMV. <laughs> oh man, that was oh by far one of my favorite scenes in a Disney movie. That was so classic. Why <laughs> would <laughs> you? Okay, that's enough of that. <laughs> okay. But no, so, no, that would be that would this could be a lot of fun. Um a lot of fun. So the next area, Toy Story Land. So the what they say, as part of Disney's Hollywood Studios in Florida, guests shrink to the size of a toy and join in the fun in this toy-filled land inspired by the Toy Story films. Guests can take a ride on Slinky Dog Dash, a roller coaster. Andy assembled from his mega coaster toy kit. They can also join the little green aliens as they swirl about in their rocket ships toys in the alien swirling saucers. The land also includes carnival games and a restaurant. Woody's lunchbox. So are we just taking like, are we taking the toy story spin from California? Well, I mean, unless they, if they figure out how to connect those two, because I could, they already have, they have like the Toy Story spin. They have the Buzz uh, Lightyear uh, Galaxy. Astro Blasters. Astro Blasters at, Diz at uh, Tomorrowland. Um, so let's see. Um, I thought, what's that roller coaster they have in Toontown? Gadget's Go Coaster? Yeah. Oh, okay. That, yeah, that's the name of it. So therefore, yeah. That So this would be a, a new... I thought they had this. I thought they had... Uh, a slinky dog roller coaster at oh no never mind that's i think that's in uh it's in florida florida yeah okay yeah so it's uh <clears throat> i i'm not terribly impressed with toy story land at at disney world um they've also built out somewhat of a toy story land in um i can't i can't remember it's shanghai or it's uh hong no i believe it's hong kong uh, Hong Kong Disney, they built out a Toy Story Land, um, which has some similar rides. And the one that they don't have listed here that is at Hong Kong Disney is the Army Men Parachute Drop. Oh. Yeah. So that, I don't know. These two rides don't uh, tickle my fancy. The I've heard Mostly a lot. Mostly because I wouldn't be able to fit on it either. <laughs> I wouldn't really be able to fit on the Well, I mean. Road. Disney builds these rides for adults. I mean, you, you can go on gadgets, go coaster. Uh, when I went there for my honeymoon, you know, a couple of years ago, many years ago, um, you know, my wife and I, we went on gadgets, go coaster. Um, oh, okay. so yeah, you can, you can still go on Disney doesn't design rides typically for kids. They design them so adults can enjoy them with their kids. Oh, yeah, um, sense. So you'd be able to ride Slinky Dog. Uh, I have heard some really uh, negative feedback about the Slinky Dog ride, and I think they had to take the tail off at one point of Slinky Dog because it was whipping around hitting people on the ride. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, one of our viewers has said, so I've heard Gat Toy Story Land at Walt Disney World is kind of lousy. Um, 
Yes, I, I have heard that as well. Uh, I haven't been since that opened. Um, yeah, when I went, um, it was actually, uh, we weren't able to actually go that far back due to the fact that uh, they were working on Galaxy's Edge at that point in time. And so that a large portion of the park was actually shut down. Yeah, I like I said, I, I get it. There are, at this point, four, four Toy Stories. Um, and and potentially a fifth on the horizon. Um, of, of what? I, I have heard rumors that, you know, as long as Tim Allen and Tom Hanks are alive and are willing, they'll try and crank out as many as they can. Um, yes. <laughs> but, you know, at, at Disney World, um, they they have three rides in that area, which one of them is the Toy Story Mania. So, you know, you are right at Disneyland and California adventure. We already have two toy story based rides. Right. Um, that are almost, ex- I mean, they're kind of the same concept. Uh, well, no, I guess, I guess toy story, I get what you're... toy story mania is more of a, a carnival game type, but like with Astro blasters, it's basically you're racking up points just kind of the same. Yeah, uh, conceptually they are similar. Um, there are there are the nuanceable differences, but right. um, you know I do think if they moved both of those rides to free up those spaces within the parks for something else, I think that would be great. You know, absolutely. Actually, you know what? I I would love to see. I mean, I, I don't know. I would love to see at, uh, at at in Tomorrowland if they took out if they were to move the Astro Blasters over. And they actually would bring over the um, uh, the alien. Uh, oh, what was that? What was that ride called? It's the one where the alien. Uh, you're supposed to meet a diplomat from another alien from, encounter. Yeah, I mean, so maybe I think they that changed that. Been, o- that's been they, gone for a long time. They switched it to Stitch. Stitch. Yeah. So I mean, like I. I mean. That something like that. I mean, I I like the scariness of that, but I might have been too scary for kids and stuff like that. So, the alien encounter. It, many people had heart attacks in that ride. So that's oh snap. <laughs> yeah, it was so scary that uh, people were having heart attacks. So they they ended up <laughs> retheming it from. Alien I don't mean encounter. to laugh, but that's. I don't they tell you like this contains scary moments. So if you have heart conditions and stuff, <sighs> people don't listen, man. That's true. They don't. Man, uh, that... And so they rethemed it to Stitch, um, and it just has not done well. So I've actually heard that they're shutting that one down and ripping it out. Oh, um, oh. So, uh, you know, ultimately, I remember back when Buzz Lightyear's Astro Blasters in Tomorrowland was Circle Vision. Um, you know, yeah. that obviously not as tomorrow today, um, but, you <laughs> yeah. know, yeah. it, it was a cool... Now. It was a cool concept. Um, you know, I definitely think, I don't think they're going to move those two rides over to this potential land. Um, one, because they are so similar. I could see them moving one of the two. Yeah. Um, but uh, I don't know which one would be the right choice. Uh, I think way, if they were going to do it, I think Toy Story Mania would be the one to move yeah. over. Yeah, because the Buzz Lightyear one is specific to his television show. Right. And and the thing is, is if you move Toy Story Mania over there in that spot, I mean, you think about what they could m- potentially put in there. They could put um, in a soul ride. Yeah, they could do soul. They could do um, something it's gotta, else. It's got to be Pixar. Yeah. So something else, maybe Incredibles. Um, I mean, they have the Incredible Coaster, which kind of runs over it. Uh, Incredicoaster, I think it's called. Um, you know, you could do something. uh you said they have the inside out. Um, man, I'm trying to run through all the Pixar movies in my head right now, and I'm I'm failing miserably. That's okay. You are yeah. a failure. Um, wow. <laughs> so, ultimately, wow. ultimately, this this specific piece out of everything we've looked at so far doesn't doesn't tickle my fancy the most. Um, you know, uh, the the alien swirling saucers. Uh, I believe is pretty similar conceptually to Mater's ride over in in uh, in Cars Land. Yeah. Um, it, it's actually, I think, if I recall, it's almost identical the ride car and the way that the ride actually works. Uh, so 
I don't think that that's a good call unless they're planning on ripping out maters and repurposing that and putting something else there. Um, either way, uh, again, these are not finalized. These are just hypotheticals that they could do. Now on to probably my favorite Ooh. and the one I am most excited. Sorry. Sorry. Actually, you know what could be very interesting over there is something for uh, Coco. A death ride. Okay. Uh, not death ride, but something like, you know, you just kind of try. It's like a, some kind of journey through through the afterlife in that kind of sense. I could see that. It could be interesting. Or bra- actually, they, they don't really show love to Brave. <laughs> I think Brave is kind of underrated. But I'm just, I kind of, I pulled up a list of Pixar movies so that I, mm. so that, you know, I didn't feel so bad about myself. Anyways. I mean, continue. it would be, it would be nice for them to potentially bring back something from, you know, A Bug's Life because that's all gone now. That's going to be the new Avengers campus. So. Oh yeah. They could do something like that. Um, But moving on to, I think definitely the one thing out of all of this, I'm the most excited to potentially see um, Tron currently open in Shanghai Disneyland and under construction at the magic kingdom park in Florida, the Tron light cycle run roller coaster invites guests to sink the pedal to the moto metal with twisting and turning in the cyber fi world in a high speed race for survival. Um, I haven't been on it. I have seen the videos. Um, I have seen construction of what's going on in Florida. Uh, I want to ride this ride so badly. Um, you know, I, I'm planning a trip to Disney world, uh, in a couple of years, uh, and that, uh, it will be open by then. And, uh, I am that, that may be a first day, first ride type thing to, to get in, get on. Um, I'm stoked for that. Um, make sure you get your fast pass early, right? Yeah. Uh, so this is another proposed ride. Uh, it doesn't sound like it would be a Tron land. It just sounds like it would be the just the coast. one ride. Yeah. Um, Which I'm okay with. Cause I think Tron, Tron would be something that's super hard to pull off. Yeah. I mean, did the, int- wait, hold, hold on. Did the Tron cartoon really tank? Cause I mean like, yeah, uprising wasn't super great, but it was it was pretty good like I, the way that it ended without like a, another season kind of was a bummer but i don't know if it really tanked uh i mean it had 19 episodes and uh it was only on for you know basically a season i would say that probably isn't uh means it didn't do too well well it was also on it, it was on uh disney xd which was like not it was i don't know i'm i'm sorry uh star wars uh not clone wars uh yes that was there too but also but but it, it wasn't it wasn't original to to XD. rebels are you talking about yes yes i, I think that did fairly well I think that did fairly really well on XD. But um, again, that was another one that I actually see. That's the thing is like I had to watch all these after the fact. I because I didn't have Disney XD and Disney XD wasn't available. They had Disney XD, but they didn't have any of the good stuff that was on Disney XD on Hulu, which was mm-hmm. kind of a bummer. I mean, the reason I think you're the most mad is because Reginald Val Johnson voiced a character, and you know, <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah i mean I, I i i mean i actually i liked it um from just it was it was just kind of a uh a nice it was it's basically like a prequel into tron legacy i think and so and it, i guess that's what they were going for but you know wouldn't the prequel of, to tron legacy be tron <laughs> okay so it's it's a after aftermath of Tron and a prequel to Tron Legacy. Ah, ah. So it's what took place between the two films. Yeah. Kind of like Clone Wars was between episodes two and three. Which is, you know what? I, I, I know this, we're kind of getting off topic here, but the fact of the matter is, is that Clone Wars was 
when they aired it, it's almost out of order. I actually had to go. I actually had uh, somebody send me a link to show me how to watch watch Clone the proper Wars order. properly, and I was just like, "Oh, that would that makes so much more sense now." Because I remember watching episodes, and I was like, "Wait, he's dead! Like, how is he back all of a sudden?" But yeah, yeah, there there anyway. were some weird continuity issues. Yeah, yeah. Still a fantastic series. Oh uh, no, absolutely! I go- I need. To, that's why I'm trying to. I need to watch it correctly so that I can watch that final season because I haven't. I still haven't watched it yet. Yeah, and then going back and watching episode two, then watching Clone Wars, then watching episode three, makes those two films so much better because um, they 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 weren't great in my opinion, but watching that series in between really makes them stronger films. Episode and- one is still garbage. Hot hot garbage. I um, still I still think that um I I'm just I was excited. I was I was excited about Rebels because when they said that they were bringing Ahsoka Tano back, I was just like, thank god. But um I think Ahsoka is is definitely a great character and I'm I'm glad that um she's she's getting a lot more love in the Star Wars universe as far as uh being on Mandalorian and apparently getting her own series, which I'm interested to see how that goes. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to that spinoff. Um, so moving on uh, with our um, proposal from Disney at DisneylandForward.com. Um, the next section on this page uh, kind of shows the existing lay of the land as we know it today and what they are proposing to potentially do with the area. Um, and so what we can see is um, Disneyland with an expanded park over to uh, east of Disneyland Drive um, where it would have those three lands re- that we referenced earlier, Tangled, Frozen, and Peter Pan, uh, potentially. Um, and you can see that there is a, a gap between those two, uh, which is a part of downtown Disney as we know it today. Uh, so I believe the movie theater is there. ESPN zone, I believe, is there. Um, so, and you can see where there are likely turnstiles or entrance gates. So you yeah. could go straight into those parks, which I think is interesting. Rather than having to go through the Disneyland main entrance, it looks like you may be able to go straight into these parts of the parks, which I think, A, is great at opening time because it kind of filters people yeah, into different yeah. areas. Um, and, and especially once these parks uh, or these additions to the parks re, you know, have their grand opening, you know everybody's going to want to go there. Yeah. And, and so for those of us that don't necessarily care if I have to get on it right away, you, you could go through the main entrance. Yeah. And you could all hit everything there. Avoid all that traffic. Yeah. Um, so we see that there's a, a new possible parking structure that would be built, uh, looks like, uh, east of South Harbor and north of Disney way. Uh, Disney does uh, has bought up a ton of land over there um, over the last couple of years. And, uh, you know, we, the parking structure proposal uh, has been approved from what I had heard and read a couple of years ago, it was approved for them to go ahead and start doing that. Uh, and there would be a walkway that goes over uh, South Harbor and then down onto Disney property. Um, and so that would definitely makes sense. Yeah, and they're going to need it. You know that that parking garage, uh, while massive, that currently exists, it, it's not a very the concept. It doesn't work. I mean, it it clearly it, works, but it's not but enough it, parking, and that's why currently they still have to utilize a lot of the downtown Disney parking. Um, and so, if you're going to lose that for these additions to the parks, you need to have more parking. Um, yeah. And so, this new possible parking structure. Um, would be, I think, a welcome uh, thing and and obviously necessary. What's also interesting, so we've talked about the addition to Disneyland, the addition to California Adventure, but now we have a new kind of Disney entertainment destination, which is found kitty corner from Disney's California Adventure. Um, 
So I believe that is uh, south of Catella and east of South Harbor. Um, this is a swath of land where Disney already owns a lot of this, or they probably own all of it if they're proposing this, but they already <laughs> have, they, they currently have a, the Toy Story parking lot is there. Um, so this is a, a section of land that uh, I'll just read their verbiage. This property could be the perfect location to cater to locals, conventioneers, hotel, and Disneyland resort guests with restaurants, hotels, live music, shopping, ticketed shows, and theme park experiences modeled after the popular Disney Springs at Walt Disney World Resort. That's a nice uh, spot. That's a nice spot. Yes, yes, it is. And, um, one of the things uh, that uh, you can see in this artist rendering is there's definitely at least one hotel there. Um, you know, I, I have read on a couple of the other pages that are talking about this, that there would be a full size Broadway theater where likely major national tours would come through. I mean, if it's well, Disney Springs was uh, the well, it was at the, I think it was called Pleasure Island when it first opened. Um, was the actual first home of a Cirque du Soleil show, which was O, oh, um, which is you know it's still I believe it's still currently there, and they have the uh, one here in Vegas. But um, that would be an interesting concept. One of the things that I miss at Disney World which they which they took out of there was an indoor theme park called Disney Quest mhm mm um which was kind of another theme park i remember we went there uh, i went there and i had a blast i mean we got there in the afternoon and it was way late when we left so you kind of lose time in there but um uh, a lot of fun i would almost I don't know. I don't know the reason for them closing it. Maybe it was a money issue, staffing issue, something. I don't know exactly why they closed it down, but that would be something that could fit into this whole new area as well. I mean, it's just something that's uh, more money, a potential money maker, and I think uh, I, I I always like that. Uh, I really like that concept of Disney Quest. So one of our uh one of our viewers uh, is commenting and I believe they're talking not necessarily about Disney quest. I think they're talking about this uh, Disney Springs proposed area and saying it's too far away. And um, you know, I think if you're purely looking at it as something as accessible, if you're at a Disney park and wanting to just walk over, yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit of a walk. Well, probably... Disney, Dis, uh, Disney Springs in Orlando, you, I mean, I stayed at one of their properties and we had to take, you know, they have shuttles that go over there. So, I mean, it's, you still had to take a shuttle pretty much from anywhere. Uh, you're staying on a property or whatever you, you pretty much have to take a shuttle there or drive there. It's not like a right, you know, right next to the parks type deal. Yeah. And that's what I was going to say is I don't, I don't necessarily think that this area is necessarily considered to be, um, part of oh Disney he was talking about the parking lot mark ah no that was about the parking lot uh yeah. the current parking lot is too far away uh yeah i don't disagree with that i mean they do have the trolley system which takes you there uh which will bring you closer to the park entrances but i do still feel that when you take the when you do park in that garage and then you take the trolley it drops you off in downtown disney and then you still have to walk to the park quite quite a ways um, and especially after a long day um, <laughs> at either of the two parks, yeah, uh, no making way. that walk back to the trolley, then taking the trolley back to the parking structure and then, you know, taking those big tall escalators and um, yeah, I, I don't think it's the best laid plans, but um, you know, that's why I always try to just stay at one of the hotels directly across the street and um <laughs> Yeah, you know, because if I'm if I'm already gonna have to walk that far, uh, just to take the trolley to my car, then I might as well stay at a hotel across the street, pay a little bit more, and uh, do the same walk. You know what I mean? Well, they also and, have the, uh, if you say it a little bit further out, they have their most of the hotels have a uh, have a, a bus or whatever that'll 
pick, take you to it from the parks. Yeah, but even there, like when you're walking from the bus drop off to the park entrances, it's you know if you stay at one of the hotels directly across the street, it's not that much more of a walk. You know what I mean? Sure. So I don't know. Um, you so can you can eat at Denny's and meet Missile. <laughs> that, that that was IHOP. Oh, is that, that IHOP? IHOP? Yeah, and sorry, his name IHOP. was Miss Il, but you can call him Missile. <laughs> You know, like the rocket. <laughs> oh, that kid was that kid was classic. Well, we'll have to tell of, that. We'll have to share that story later. We will. We will share that story at some point. But uh, yeah. that was that was a good time. So, getting back to the Disney Forward website. Um, so that kind of walks us through the project uh, section. The next section is called Leading Together, and this is where Disney talks about working kind of hand in hand with. Anaheim, Orange County, California. Um, and so obviously this is where you can tell it's trying to focus on, um, you know, convincing uh, local officials to be swayed towards wanting to support some of these proposals. Um, you know, in one area, they talk about Anaheim and Disney focusing forward. Uh, construction focus. Any future construction with Disneyland Forward would include using union contractors for the majority of future development, implementing a local hire program to benefit Anaheim and Orange County residents, including a veteran hiring component, diversity outreach, including hiring minority, women, LGBTQ, disadvantaged businesses, using environmentally responsible technologies throughout design and construction creating thousands of good paying new jobs throughout construction and operations. Um, you know, they go through a couple different sections, continued investments, uh, facing our challenges together where they talk about donations that they've made. Uh, you know, then I, the one area that I think is pretty impactful is near the bottom of the page. Um, where it talks about yeah, in typical, typical years. <laughs> yeah. In typical years, the resort, the resort district the generates, generates. 94.5 million. <laughs> yeah. $94.5 million in surplus revenue that goes directly to Anaheim's general fund. Disneyland. Is, uh, it says economic, oh, data. economic data. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Disney, okay. Disneyland Resort is responsible for $8.5 billion in positive economic impact and more than 78,000 jobs in Southern California. $20 million in support to nonprofit organizations each year. 400 community projects supported by Disney volunteers ears, uh, annually and 28 million paid to Anaheim schools as Anaheim's largest taxpayer. That's uh, crazy. Yeah. That's, that's, that's some buku bucks right there. Yeah. <laughs> so obviously doing a, a program like this and, and getting these things approved and pushed through and uh, greenlit, you know, you're going to see that dollar amount go from 94.5 million to well over a hundred, hundred and fifteen million dollars a year uh in tax revenue to the city of anaheim that's that's crazy um and, and part of the thing that's interesting here is if you look at that area of anaheim there is there's no residential in any of the areas that they're working in it's nope. it's all you know hotel business you know industrial area so yeah um What's what? What's sad is how these things get held up. And looking back to the '90s, there was a lot of bluster and a lot of uh, things that were held up longer than they needed to be, which delayed projects, which um, ultimately, you know, increased potential costs of projects. And so the scopes had to be changed. Yeah. Um, you know, as as somebody who you know works for the state of Nevada and works closely with our capital improvements project section of the state, you know, I, I directly am involved with with budgetary uh, processes for, you know, a new building for a university that's let's say forty eight million dollars to build, uh, and <clears throat> waiting just one year can change that from 48 million to, you know, let's say 54, 56 million. Yeah, that's um, true. I mean, it, honestly, I, I mean, I, I, if you just look at the money that they bring in uh, and if, and you're looking at um, the, the projects that they, you know, have, have been involved in and, and everything else. I mean, that's, 
it's almost like, let's do it. You know, I mean, I, I don't know how, again, I don't know how um, these things work the same way that you do, but I mean, that's kind of, I mean, throwing those numbers out there is, is really kind of eye opening. And if, you know, I was, if I was on a board or something, I, that would be like, Oh, well, let's, you know, that's going to be more jobs, more potential um, revenue and all that kind of stuff. I mean, you know, I'd kind of be all about it, but again, that's California. So, yeah. Um, so then, you know, on the next tab, they have an FAQ, a frequently asked question, question section. Uh, I'm not going to read through all of these, but um, I do think uh, some of them answers are very interesting. Um, you know, what do you have planned? So this is, I think, an interesting one. Uh, we are at the very beginning stages of the process. While the project will be refined over time, we hope to explore the creation of integrated experiences featuring new theme park attractions, dining, retail, hotel, and more. Right now, we don't have any specific projects planned for the future. To be clear, Disney is not seeking any public funding for Disney Forward, nor are we seeking additional square footage or hotel rooms beyond what is currently approved and allowed. Rather, we are simply asking to update our existing approvals to allow for integrated development to be located and built on Disney properties. And that, that first line uh, where they talk about we're not seeking, uh, you know, any kind of public funding or anything like that is repeated in a lot of the answers in these questions. <laughs> they want to make it very clear Yes. And, and, you know, I think that that's an important piece. Um, Absolutely. You know, a, an additional very timely question, frequently asked question, how will COVID-19 affect Disneyland Forward? Disneyland Forward is a vital planning effort among Disney, the city, and the community. It is truly important that we reach out and explain Disneyland Forward to the community and area stakeholders. We are committed to holding informational meetings, which will be held virtually up until conditions improve. So COVID-19 doesn't really affect this. Um, so on, on the next tab, we have a get involved. Um, and that's where you can provide your information. Uh, you know, if you support this, uh, you know, if you, you know, want to get more information, obviously they're, they'll take any support they can get. But what they really want to see is support from, you know, Orange County, Anaheim residents, because that will help with their fight uh, with the city if there is one. Um, they have a contact page, um, which just has an email address, and uh, the ability to change the language from English to Spanish. Uh, <laughs> so, so obviously this this information all just dropped uh, here this week. And uh, we thought it important enough to do an on-the-fly show to uh, share this information and share our thoughts. Um, I, I would love to see expansions to both of those parks. Um, regardless of what the content is, uh, I, as, as we talked about at the top of the show, huge Disney fans. So anything more that we can get, we will take gladly, I think. <laughs> no doubt. I mean, I, I mean, even just w with some of this proposed stuff, I mean, even if we get like just a little bit of it, I mean, I'm down. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm down. So, uh, so I think we are at a point where we can wrap up. Um, James, you got anything for us? Uh, no, man. I'm just, uh, you know, it was, it, this was, uh, this was, this was fun. And, uh, you know, just, um, uh, it was it was nice to actually be able to you know to talk about something and and be excited about you know new fu new futures absolutely yeah. a post covid life if you will oh can't wait yes oh, yes I oh it looks like a, a viewer has a question, so we'll go ahead and wait on that for just a moment. Uh, yeah. While we're waiting on that, uh, this will be um, obviously turned into a podcast after we finish our broadcasting. Um, so you'll be able to find that through Anchor, 
uh, Apple podcast, you know, wherever you go to get your podcast, they'll be there. Um, and we should have the video of this up uh, live at some point in the next couple of days. We will still be doing our normal show on Tuesday. Um, so uh, Tuesday at 1 p.m. So please make sure to tune in then to enjoy. Uh, so the final question that we have coming in, uh, it says, interesting they are proposing all this so soon after all the cast member layoffs. Uh, layoffs from Imagineering. Um, yeah, I mean, I think a lot of those layoffs, uh, I get the impression were directly tied to COVID to COVID as well as a lack yeah. of, of any future projects. Um, you know, the, the hard part is when you don't have these potential growth opportunities, how do you keep Imagineers employed aside from re imagining um, existing areas. And, and that's one of the arguments Disney makes in, in this website is, you know, if we're not giving, given this area to, to build within, then, you know, we may have to destroy or take down or repurpose classic rides that people love. Um, so yeah, I don't disagree that, you know, it's, it's weird to lay people off and then turn around and say, Hey, look what we want to try to do. Um, but Disney is also known for going back to those people first and foremost to say, Hey, you know, sorry, we had to do that, but, uh, you want to come back? We got something for you. Yeah. Um, and it, you know, at the end of the day, you got to make business decisions, unfortunately. And, um, if you can't justify, keeping having, people on then you've got to do what you've got to do yeah. um you know i i think if if anaheim if the city council if the the officials in in that area sign off on this then you know imagineers will be back in full force and they'll need to probably bring some more people back on <clears throat> um you know uh Viewer says, uh, if it keeps the dream going, I'm absolutely in favor of this new stuff. And I, I agree wholeheartedly. I, I going back to the, to the quote, uh, you know, from Walt Disney himself, um, you know, uh, Disneyland will never be completed. It will continue to grow as long as there is imagination left in this world. Yeah. So, or left in the world, I should say, but to quote yeah, exactly. I, as long as I'm alive, I never want to see it stop. Um, you know, as you heard me say earlier in this broadcast, I would hate to see something like Peter Pan be, uh, you know, Peter Pan's flight be, be torn out because I have such fond memories. But mm -hmm. I also understand that, you know, we've got to progress and, you know, keep things going. And, you know, classics that we've loved in the past, sometimes um, – they've had their day and now it's time to move on to something else. Yeah. Uh, it's, hard, it's sometimes hard to accept, but I get it. Yeah, um, no, absolutely. I, like I said, I, I mean, I, I would be, ex <laughs> I, I also agree. I would absolutely be in favor of, of new, um, new rides, new lands, new way areas to explore. So, yeah. Yeah. So Thank you for, for joining us on this late uh, Friday evening into Saturday morning. Um, yes. We will get this up uh, and available as soon as possible. And uh, as I said before, we will be back on Tuesday at 1 p.m. for our normal broadcast. So be on the lookout for that. And uh, we hope that you all have a fantastic morning. You know, for those of you that may be viewing on the East Coast, um, it's, uh, it's about four in the morning for you. So. Yeah. so. Night, night. Well, I'm going, I got to go to bed myself. Yes, me too. So we will catch you soon. Thank you all for joining. Take care.